Hi, I'm Derek Robinson. I'm an online course developer here at Intersystems, and I'm joined by Intersystems global fire expert, Russ Lefwich. And today we're going to be talking about some frequently asked questions in the fire space. Um, Russ, you ready to get started? Yeah, I'm, I am. I'm looking forward to, to providing some answers. Absolutely. So when we're talking about fire, I understand that fire is a pretty new technology in healthcare. Is that right? Well, fire is not new technology. It's the same technology that the World Wide Web is built on. The same thing in, that enables what we do every day with Google and Facebook and Twitter, right. uh, that's the technology. What's new is that FHIR has a healthcare data model underneath that technology. Mm -hmm. So think of it as the World Wide Web for healthcare. Right. Right. That part is new, but it's the same technology. It's what's called a REST API. Yeah representational state API, and that's what enables us to do things on the internet. Maybe the easiest uh, one to explain is uh, a booking website, and you want to book an airline flight, and you go to your favorite website, and you put in when you want to travel and from where to where, and yep. uh, you see flights on different airlines, not because that website has all the travel schedules, but right. because the airlines have agreed on how to ask for the data in an airline flight and what you get back in return. And that's what FHIR is for healthcare, right. how to ask for the data you want and what you're going to get back in return. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So projecting that forward into healthcare then, does that mean that, you know, EHR is going forward will all basically move towards storing their data in, in the FHIR standard? No, no, because in fact, EHRs don't store data in FHIR, uh, none of them do. They store data in their, uh, their own format. Their proprietary database is how they store data. Uh, that's part of their secret sauce. So in fact, when uh, an EHR gets a query for FHIR data through that API, it has to go fetch the data from its database the way it's stored, mm -hmm. and then convert it to fire, which means the EHR has to know how to make that conversion from right. their data to the fire format, and then answer the query with fire. So it's not stored as fire, not in any EHRs. Right, right, gotcha. So following up on that, um, why not? Like, wh how, why isn't uh, it a good idea to be storing data Well, fire? fire was created to be an interoperability standard to be a single way that you could ask any system for healthcare data without having to know how that data, that uh, system stores its data. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea of FHIRE. And in fact, FHIRE continues to evolve, continues to improve the way other technology does. And we've gotten used right. to that in other other fields, you know, right, right. It, it this year's smartphone is not the, right. as good as next year's smartphone. So storing it as fire long term right. wouldn't make sense. Now storing it long enough to do analytics to use it for mm -hmm. care delivery that, right. that's one thing. But storing it long term like an EHR stores data, no fire right. fire will never be suitable for that in in the foreseeable future. Right. So with FHIR being so new, it seems like it might be a little risky for everybody to just kind of dive in right away. Uh, do, you, do you see risk involved there with, with adopting FHIR so quickly? No. Uh, you know, change is always hard, right. but I think we have to start thinking differently about adopting this new technology the way we do right. in other areas. Uh, right. And it's true um, that FHIR is new. Um, we have progressed. We're now on fire release five, so it is moving along, but I think we have to start thinking of it the way we do smartphones. Right. So the first iPhone, only a few people bought one, but when they started talking about how they could do things with it that they couldn't do before, the next iPhone, yeah. uh, the next iPhone, uh, more people are using. Mm -hmm. And you know where we are now, you know, we've, we've gone from one to two to, to, and now, uh, you know, yeah. six, and now we're at 14, and we'll keep going. Right. I, I don't think there will be a final iPhone, right. do you? Right. Um, it, but right. but FHIR is the same way. It mm -hmm. keeps getting better. Right. It keeps uh, 
adding new features and capabilities, uh, and people are starting to take advantage of it. And just like uh, iPhones, there are more people uh, lining up, if you yeah. will, to use Fire and finding new uses for it. And I think that will continue as far as we can, can see into the future. Yeah, that makes sense. So InterSystems folks know, obviously, there's a whole bunch of healthcare standards out there, right? Yeah. We have HL7 v2, IAG, CDA, DICOM, yeah. X12. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, how soon, if ever, do you see Fire replacing you know, some or all of these standards in healthcare applications in the field? So I, Fire won't replace everything. Right. No time in the foreseeable future. Um, there will be cases where mm -hmm. Fire does a better job and you may replace a standard with Fire when you update your system or get a new system, but the investment in systems that use these existing standards is trillions of dollars. Right, right. There's no uh, economic justification for replacing them just because Fire might right, do things right. better, but in many cases, these standards do what they were meant to do as well as it's possible to do it. So, no, I don't think FHIR will replace other standards. We will live in a hybrid world. Um, InterSystems is uh, expert in managing many different standards in the same uh, environment. That's right. what we do, and that's what's going to be necessary going forward into the future. Right. All right, so kind of shifting to the interoperability conversation, yeah. um, a common one at InterSystems, right? It sounds like Fire is really equipped to almost solve the interoperability problem. Like if we all just started using Fire, would that essentially solve the problems we have in healthcare interoperability? Well, no, it's a bit harder than that. But right. a lot of people, when they start to understand, jump to that conclusion, yeah. or they don't understand why using Fire hasn't solved the interoperability right. problem. Right. But the truth is, Fire is a flexible data model. Mm -hmm. It's flexible so that it can be used in a lot of different use cases, a lot of different situations. Mm -hmm. But that flexibility means that it's not interoperable in and of itself right. because all of those situations have different interoperability needs. Mm -hmm. What we do use to solve that interoperability uh, problem is fire profiles. And fire profiles are when you take the base fire standard and you customize it. It's called constraining it to fit that particular use case. That's where the interoperability comes in. Mm -hmm. So you've right. taken away the flexibility to use it for one particular thing, and then you have what we call semantic interoperability. Mm -hmm. You can really exchange the same information between multiple systems the way we have to do in today's world if we really want to represent all the data for an individual patient, which is what it's all about. If we want to represent that data and see it from one place in real time, we have to have that fire profile that tells us exactly which features of the data we need for this particular use case. So customizing right. FHIR using a FHIR profile. So when we talk about FHIR, FHIR is not the first open source data standard or technology that we've seen in healthcare or in other spaces, but it seems like the FHIR community seems to progress quite a bit faster than we see a lot of other open source technologies the, the, do. The FHIR community is remarkable. Yeah. And it is growing globally at an incredible pace, and you're right, much faster than other open source communities. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several reasons for that, but one of the most important reasons, and one of the most important reasons that FHIR is such a revolutionary uh, uh, innovation mm -hmm. uh, is that everything in the FHIR standard is machine readable. It's there so humans can read it too, but it's machine readable, and that means that everything you create from Fire is machine readable. And the fact that it's machine readable means you can share it in a way that you couldn't share the standards that have come before. They were documents. They were published as documents. Somebody had to read them, interpret them. But Fire is literally readable by computers and therefore shareable mm -hmm. by computers the way we share other things on the internet and the way we share the data. Right. But the standard itself is 
uh, shareable, and those customizations, those fire profiles that we share are machine readable, so we can share them uh, not just between people, but between systems. Right, right. Nice.